guys. So this is called Who is Julie and Who is Nick? And I got it um, 5.30, 23, 5 a.m. and 5.31, 23, 12 p.m. And um, this is a little embarrassing to put out, but I understand the Lord just needs to work through it. Um, this is to answer the thoughts and some of the comments where people are like, who's Julie? Even though clearly I'm the one speaking it. And then um, who's Nick? Understand these are not my words. And this isn't even really how I perceive myself. So it's kind of interesting for me to see what is important to the Lord. But um, here we go. Me that loves privacy. Let's just throw it all out there. <laughs> all right. Who is Julie? Who is Nick? I see these thoughts and questions and I will answer. Julie is rare. I, the Lord, hold her in high esteem. She has confidence in what I show her regardless of who gives opposition. Most with whom I speak do not hear. They disregard my words. When this happens, I no longer speak. She was raised in a generation that disregards my words, much like Moses. The culture around him lacked awe for me and disregarded the words from me. But Julia's rare. She was trained well to disregard my words from every direction, even churches and schools that teach the Bible. But when I spoke, she listened. When she was told to ignore this, instead of obeying man, she just stopped telling man that she was hearing me. I have been speaking with her since childhood, but no man knew this until late, until I pressed her to begin sharing dreams and then finally my words to the world. She had been a diligent one to study my words since childhood, daily and deeply like David. She began to pray for my wisdom at age 12, much like Solomon. She requested this daily, and I have granted it. She had the grades and opportunity to go to one of the finest universities in the nation and found little value in it. Instead, craving my word, attended a small conservative Bible college to learn more. There, she deepened her language studies of my words and learned to do ministry in the things that I gifted her with teaching children and counseling people and rearing a family in my ways. At every turn, there were choices to make just like everyone else, but she carefully evaluated the choices and made sure the path that she took was what would be my choice. She cried out to me and asked for counsel. This shaped her activities, friends, jobs, spouses, staying home with her kids, homeschooling them, and much more. When I pressed her and her husband to move, they did not delay. They just picked up and moved. Many times I did this to show her things and to grow her faith. When I called her to teach her own, I showed her the problems within the various options for curriculum and I used her inborn ability to write and her collegiate training in this area and guided her to write curriculum that was from me for her children. Every day I would wake her with words to write and she did not delay. She got up and wrote thousands and thousands of pages over the years to properly educate her family in a culture where truth has been lost. No one knows the sacrifices I have seen, the diligence I have witnessed, or the heart she has for wanting those in her care to have a proper view of me. She was raised in the finest of schools and complete with secular knowledge, just like Daniel and Moses. They were fully educated in man's wisdom, but she escaped their futile ways by consistently praying and reading my words. She is rare in that when a teacher or professor would say things that were different than the Bible, she would stand and disagree when appropriate and do it mentally when not. She would not accept their version of the truth, always holding my words as the standard. This is rare in her generation. She is the fourth one through time to find the end times patterns within the words of the Bible. She is the only one in your generation. This will be rewarded. When she shared this with a few, all rejected it, or they could not see it because of their own bias to listen to others over my word. When all rejected it, she held on to it. She has a great ability to allow others to come to their own conclusions and allow them to differ while staying strong in what she believes. This is much like Noah. He lived out his faith by what he knew to be true, but he did not pass judgment on others around him. She has written Bible curriculum for her children four separate times so they could study the Bible chronologically. One year I guided her 
to integrate the Bible's chronology with secular history so that her children could be properly educated with me at the core of history. Not a separate course disjointed from how I have shaped people through time. There have been others who have tried this and come close, but they have missed the point. And I am the central story, not man's events. She wrote many books to help other mothers in their parenting and homeschooling efforts. Her primary mission was to find the proper biblical character that exemplified the central focus of each book. She is gifted to see the humanity in scripture and understand the human issues that would naturally arise between the dynamics. She preceded each book with a Bible study for the parents to help them focus and lead through me and through the example of my people highlighted in scripture. She never boasted of these undertakings. I placed a few people in her life to help her have a drive and spur on her competitive spirit. I placed a few people in her life to give her conflict and opposition to teach her to use my word to fight. I gave her some to encourage her and pray for her. I allowed the sifting from the evil one so that she would learn to give up every earthly care and allow me to take care of her every need. She learned this quickly and values me over every other thing or relationship. I gave her the gift of isolation for some time. This allowed her to seek my word and ponder things without life moving too quickly. To know me well takes a significant amount of time. I allowed Satan to sift her just like Job. When the evil one sifted her time and time again, I was pleased that she turned fully to me through each challenge. With each testing, she grew more convinced of my provisions and more proved that her fellow humans were not ever going to meet her expectations. She had high and unrealistic hopes to find other Christians within the church aiming at me with the same vigor and sincerity that she has. Curious for a time why others were not seeking the Lord properly. This also did not sway her from her course. She would rather walk alone than walk in weakness. There is nothing on this earth that could draw her away from me. She has had many trials that most could not endure. Some in physical pain, others psychological warfare, and others just extreme tests that would take the typical person out. She never failed. At each one, her inclination was not to complain or wish a way out of it, but to turn to me in prayer and ask me to carry it. Julie is a natural leader. I have always drawn people to her, even in childhood. She gives them wise counsel from me. Some listen, some do not. She knows when to shake off her sandals and move on from those who do not listen. She understands time is short and people have the free will to choose me or not. And she leaves this at my feet, not fretting about her own wishes. She just trusts that I have it all under control. Julie has a love for all things beautiful and creative because of me. I am the author of beauty and creativity. She seeks perfection because it is inborn to her, a natural draw for the perfect life, the desire to want to be here with me. Julie's strength is that she seeks me first when wondering how to deal with a situation or do a task. Before consulting a human, she seeks me. I honor this. Julie was gifted with many gifts in many areas. This was countered with Satan's sifting in the area of her health. This is when her character developed into the valiant warrior she is. She is more mentally tough than anyone in her age. She learned this from her father. She sets her mind to do a thing, regardless if her body is working or not. Some days she is paralyzed as part of her illness. That was spurred on by the evil one. Many days, her exhaustion is beyond the normal scope of what humans understand. This does not stop her. It only motivates her. This mental toughness recently has come into play when in a battle and being attacked by the evil one. She uses her irritation with the enemy as fuel to pray harder and move stronger against them. This is rare. She is diligent even through trials. This is especially rare in her age. 
she has proven to be trustworthy in a most difficult life that has taken more listening to the Holy Spirit's music than others. Although she likes consistency, the only consistency she has seen in adulthood is change and me. She quickly learned that flexibility and change are stable as long as I am the foundation. I trust her. I love her joy in any situation. She chooses to be positive no matter how difficult the situation may be. Her joy is contagious and coupled with humor. She motivates all around her to be better, try harder, and to be themselves. She gives 110% at everything she does, even if it means missing sleep. She exemplifies the traits I request of all Christians in the New Testament, to listen to the Holy Spirit and to be willfully transformed by the Word and His power. This is how I see Julie. I trust her because she has been tested and proven worthy. The second one, who is Nick? Nick is my specially selected anointed one. I have had my hand on Nick for years. He was raised in a difficult circumstance and has had many difficulties allowed in his life as he was allowed to be sifted just as Job. Some difficulties were allowed to bring him to me, others to teach him to slow down and seek me. He has much wisdom and is above this generation in understanding me. He is unique, specially made to testify of me to the nations. For now, he is quiet and in waiting for my words as to the day to come up with his gaze on me as he has been instructed. He will soon be used in a mighty way for the kingdom. I placed a voice within him, my voice. He hears me. I have told him many secrets that most do not know and would not be open to receiving. I drew him to find Julie across an ocean on a, on a small YouTube account. I confirmed to him that she was unique too. I built him into Julie's team, along with others, each with unique strengths each filled with me and full of faith. Nick has a multitude of schooling from the secular teachers. He is well-rounded in my eyes, knowing of people, pain, law, and most of all, my son and his words. Nick obeys me when I instruct. He is filled with my Holy Spirit and has a keen ability to speak with people about me. I have him in a quiet place for now so that he can focus on me. He is very humble. In the world's estimation, he has had closed door after closed door and a difficult life. But in my estimation, he is a conqueror, a champion. Why? Because he turns to me and follows my voice. He has joy when he sees new things in my words. He loves sharing my words and explaining them to others. He is a humble worker to be my hands and feet. He has already witnessed my true miracles while in Africa. He has seen the transforming power of lives that are changed through Christ. I have taken him on many journeys to show him my people and my creations. He has had many losses along the way, but he has learned not to focus on them, but to focus on me. All of the ups and downs of his life have made him into the gentle, wise man that he is. Much like Julie, if you look at him, you as a human would never understand what I see. But Nick is the only one in his generation to understand many of the clear concepts in my word. He spent hours debating with others, trying to prove what I say and what I've shown him, but none would listen. Nick has an uncanny ability to connect the dots and clues I leave in my word. That end in simple principles to understand and obey. His love for me keeps him going. He is my hands and feet in his area. He serves and strives to help others. Why? Because he was a willing vessel. He said, yes, Lord, many times with most would have said no. He serves many that other Christians would not care for. He has given up much for me and he will be rewarded tenfold for this. Why did he give up so much? Because at every turn he asked of me what is the right way to go, and he chooses what I advise. Unlike Julie, he was not raised in a faith-filled home. 
he had to conquer all of the old man in order to submit himself to be a man of faith and righteousness. But he is ready. He is whole. He is about to come on the stage and be used by me as a vessel. No one will believe what they see. He will bring many to hear and understand the music, my music. He is in step with the Spirit. He is anointed, but he has a different role than most of the anointed, a higher role. This is like Julie. She is anointed, but she has a higher role to play. These leaders are my choice for faithfully choosing me and obeying me, even when most around them do not value what I say. These two are to be honored when they come on the stage. The world will see, you will see. Nick is tired of the world more than most. I have begun to heal him and prepare him for the translation to come to me here in Gaboa. After his anointing here, he will be sent back to change the world before it is too late. Many ask, who is Nick? In truth, you do not need to know who Nick is. Only I, the Lord God Almighty, needs to know because he is my servant. But since I have seen it so many times as a question in your minds, I choose to share with you a small bit about him. Why? So you can see that I have a plan. You can see I have chosen Nick for he is special and worthy. He and Julie work well together and as they spur one another along. The third one, my leaders. I have already chosen my leaders. They have been with me a lifetime, doing exactly what I am teaching you to do now. But they had to figure it out by digging deep in scripture and applying it. They have already been proven in their siftings. They do not waver. I need ones I can count on in leadership. Their proven character shows through to me as I gaze down from the heavens. They were chosen long ago, although they have more recently known the truths of what they are soon to be doing. Who is Julie? Who is Nick? My chosen leaders. They have been chosen with a purpose and they have been proven by their siftings. Uphold them in your prayers. Soon, you will see them both on the global stage in ways they have never imagined, representing me. So I hope that helps you if you're struggling with trying to figure out who we were. I guess that's us. So see you next time.